In this video, we'll learn how to work with shading networks, as well as how we can begin to convert Maya materials into Arnold materials. Okay, great. So, in the last video, we learned sort of some basics about how we can create and apply a material. We've got here a material assigned to the windshield of our ship. Let me go ahead and jump over to the hypershade so I can show you what I'm looking at here because this is the material that we built in the previous video. Now, in between that video and this one, I've built a couple more materials that I wanted to show you. And I wanted to go ahead and encourage you in between videos yourself to go ahead and maybe build these on your own. We use the exact same techniques that we learned in the last video. So, this one I've called rubber, and you can see here how I've gotten sort of a black rubber material made. And for this one, I've just called it dark metal. Now, you'll notice here that when I selected this node, my material viewer here did not update. So, what we can do is we can begin to solo a material. If we zoom in on these nodes here, you'll notice that there's this little gray S icon. Now, because my material viewer didn't update, I know that it's still displaying that rubber material. But if I were to come over and just click that little gray S, you'll notice here that it turns blue. And now we're looking at a different material over here. So, essentially what I've done here is I have soloed this particular node. And as we begin to work with shading networks, we'll learn that we can solo more than just a material node. So, if I came over and clicked this guy, we'll solo that windshield again. Now, again, I just want to emphasize if I wanted to clear off my work area here, uh, we could select all of these nodes, but we don't want to delete these. We don't want to hit the delete key on our keyboard because that will delete these materials. And in the case of the windshield, it'll leave some geometry that does not have a material assigned to it. All of these other pieces, these gray pieces, have this Lambert 1 assigned to them. That's the purpose of Lambert 1. That's why it shows up in every new Maya scene. So, let's go ahead and select these nodes and go ahead and just hit that minus sign right here to remove them from my graph. And what I'd like to do here is I'd like to begin to convert the blend 1 material that Justin walked you through creating as well as this Fong material. I'd like to convert those over to AI standard materials for the purpose of rendering with Arnold. Okay, let's go ahead and bring blend 1 down first. I'm going to go ahead and middle click on that guy drag and drop him onto my work area. And you can see that blend 1 node shows up. Now, in the case of blend 1 here, again, I'm going to go ahead and solo it so we can see what it looks like. You can see it's got some, some lines in it, and that's to create sort of segments here. If I came up to shading and turned on my hardware texturing, you can see that's what these lines are right here. Now, this particular material consists of more than one node. And what we can do here is we can actually come up and kind of take cues from what this node looks like. You'll notice there's dots on the left side and even a couple dots here on the right. Now, there are connections that can flow into this node where each of these dots are. And likewise, connections can flow out of this node uh, on the right side. So, if we wanted to see the connected nodes that are connected to our blend 1 on both sides, we could click this button right here. That will show us incoming connections on this side and outgoing connections on this side. Let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and click that button, and you'll see suddenly our, our work area has sort of come to life here. Now, instead of just the one blend 1 node, we now have four different nodes that are displaying to us. Now, this node here, this SG, that stands for Shading Group. In this course, we're not going to really be working with this node. So, let's go ahead and remove that from our graph. However, what we're looking at here is a series of three nodes that are making up this material. Now, this is what is often referred to as a shading network here inside of Maya. Now, this is what we build oftentimes to convey more of an advanced surface. Maybe there's several different things we're trying to do with one specific material, and we need a number of different nodes to do that. In the case of this material here, these lines that we're seeing on our shader ball, 
those are coming from this ramp texture right here. In fact, if I solo that texture by clicking that little gray S, you can see what the ramp looks like. It's been configured to be just sort of this gray texture with these black lines on it. And when this ramp is connected through this noodle right here to this color input right here, basically what that does is it produces this result that we see here. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to convert this Blend 1 over into the AI Standard material. I mentioned in the previous video that the AI Standard is uh, sort of a really nice do-it-all material when it comes to Arnold. Uh, it's physically based, it produces high quality realistic results, and uh, materials like the Blend or the Fong or even the Lambert, those are very old materials and they've been inside of Maya for a long time. So let's go ahead and drop in an AI standard. Now we can do that through the create menu and like we learned in the previous video but another quick way to do that would just be to hit the tab key when your mouse cursor is over the work area and we can just start to type in this text entry field. I'll just type AISTA and there you can see it's filtered down to just the node we're looking for, AI standard. Let's go ahead and click on it and then hit enter and you'll see that Maya drops in this AI standard. Now again, we'll go ahead and remove the shading group from the graph, and now we're left with this AI standard node. Now again, we're looking up here at the blend, and oftentimes what I'll do here in order to kind of maximize this area is we can come in and begin to use these buttons to sort of collapse what we're looking at here. Let's go ahead and tap this one, and you can see it collapses all the visible connections and then maybe this button right here to increase the thumbnail size. There we go. And we could do that over here as well if we wanted to. You'll also notice that a similar icon is right here in the top right corner of each of these nodes and we can click on that to sort of begin expanding the node into various states. Okay, great. So in the case of this AI standard, let's go ahead and solo that. So we're looking at that over here inside of our material viewer. And we essentially want to take this ramp and use it to drive the color. You can see here on our blend, that noodle is connected from the out color here to this color input right here. So what we could do here is we could do this a couple of different ways. Once you're used to working with shading networks here, um, you may just prefer to click on this little green dot and drag out a new noodle. Then you can come over and connect it to color. Just like so. Now, you, let me just go ahead and select that noodle. You'll know it's selected because it's yellow, and we can delete that noodle. Just like that. And you can see here what we're left with is kind of a black result, but if we scroll up and look, that's because our diffuse color has been set to black. Another really easy way to make that connection is simply just to take this ramp node right here, and if you have your property editor visible, you can middle click, drag it, and drop it on top of that color attribute, and it does the exact same thing. All right, great. So let me go ahead and come down here since we're inside this AI standard and let's give it a name. Maybe just call this arm. And let's give it a little bit of highlight. Maybe this guy up here had some pretty significant specular highlights. Maybe not anything this intense. But if we came down here to our specular rollout right here. And let's take the weight up just a bit. And maybe we could take the roughness down some. And of course we could come in and activate our Fresnel if we wanted to. Now again, remember that's going to mean we'll probably need to drive our weight up to really be able to see what this is doing with the default settings. Let's just drive that all the way up to 1. And there we go. That's looking pretty good. I have a little bit of subtle specular highlights. If we wanted to, we could come in and take our uh, our roughness down to maybe a 0.2 just to get a little bit more sheen there. But now we need to take this material and we need to assign it to this geometry here. Now selecting this geometry may be a little difficult because there is a transparent housing there. Let me go ahead and show you another way that we could sort of make this swap. So we know that this blend is assigned to the geometry we want to target. Let's right click on our blend and choose to select objects with the material. 
Now doing so will select all objects in your scene that has this material. So if you're only wanting to target one of those objects, this is not the, the method you want to use. But in my case, it's perfect because I now have that geometry selected. I can right click here and assign material to the viewport selection. And there we go. Now it's a good idea to come back up here and do that again, just select the objects with the blend. You can see now that it is not currently assigned inside my scene, therefore I could select my blend and just delete it with my delete key. There we go. So we've got this AI standard that has now replaced our blend. Let's go ahead and tap this button, which will clear off the work area, and let's go ahead and middle click our Fong and bring it down as well. Now this Fong, if we solo it, remember this is a transparent material. So this is meant to convey either a clear plastic or maybe glass. More than likely it's clear plastic because this arm is going to flex. So uh, let's go ahead and drop in another AI standard. And we'll go ahead and mimic this exact same material with the AI standard. Okay. So zooming in here, we need something transparent. Let's come in here, solo our AI standard, give it a name, something like maybe arm sleeve. There we go. And let's come down here and begin to modify some attributes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my diffuse weight. Right now it's at 0.7 and typically you want to leave it at that unless you're doing something like chrome because most surfaces will absorb light. Um, that's where that point 0.3 comes from. Uh, let's go ahead and just dial that all the way down to zero. And what we should see is a completely black silhouette. Now in order to make this transparent, we need to introduce something called refraction. So this basically is going to allow light to penetrate the surface and bend even uh, as it passes through. There it is, refraction. So you'll notice there's a refraction color. We'll leave that alone. But the weight of the refraction, let's go ahead and drive that up to a value of 1. And you can see, <laughs> once we do that, we get a little bit of a strange result here. That's okay. Uh, we don't yet have any kind of specular highlights. We'll go ahead and come up to my specular rollout and begin to introduce some of those. I'll turn the roughness down quite a bit, maybe to something like 0.05. There we go. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like a transparent surface. We could come in here and begin to introduce Fresnel if we wanted. And possibly a little bit of reflection. Sort of like so. There we go. That's really starting to look pretty nice. Now, there is some black shapes that are showing up inside this shader ball, and that is a conversation that we're going to have, but I'm going to defer to the lighting and rendering module, because it really relates to how the rays are penetrating this particular object. Uh, if those bother you while you're tuning this material, just come over here and switch over to a sphere, and that'll give you a nice surface to look through. Now, one last thing I want to change here is called the Index of Refraction, or the IOR. You'll find that down here under Refraction. By default, this is set at a value of 1, which means that rays of light are able to pass directly through our sphere, and they're not bending at all. And this is not really how light behaves when it passes through a surface like glass or clear plastic. I'm going to ramp this up to a value of maybe 1.4. And you'll start to notice some distortion in the things we're seeing through the sphere. This is quite a bit more realistic. All right, great. So now all we need to do is come over and assign this arm sleeve to the geometry that the Fong is currently assigned to. So if we use the technique we just used, we could right click and select objects with the material. Come over here, right click, and assign material to viewport selection. Once we've done that, again, I'll select objects, and you can see nothing currently has this material assigned, so it's safe to go ahead and delete. All right, great. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up with one last thing that's really, really important when you're trying to render a transparent surface like this sleeve when using Arnold. So the material has been assigned here. Let me just minimize my hypershade, and I'm going to come back in and select the geometry here. We're going to want to come over to the Attribute Editor, and we're going to look for the Shape node right there. 
And if you scroll down in here, you should see an Arnold rollout right here. Go ahead and look inside that because we need to come in and uncheck this opaque box right here. If we don't do that, then that will prevent this surface from rendering in a transparent fashion. So go ahead and uncheck that for me so that we're ready when we do start to render our scene out. Uh, and that box is not going to prevent us from rendering that transparency. All right, great. So in this video, we've started to learn how to work with shading networks here inside of Maya.